So today's going to be a tad different. See, I'm going to be doing a response video, but I'm doing it to a band. More importantly, a song from their new album, because I believe the message being passed across isn't accurate. Before I do that though, I want to talk a bit about that band and their influence on me. See, the band is Machine Head. They are a heavy metal band, and they have been a fundamental part of my adult life. I've been a big fan of their music since I was in university in 2006, and I was actually introduced to them by chance. See, I had issues with studying, I couldn't focus. The silence was more distracting. So housemates recommended I listen to music, music that could either inspire me, or capture my mind, or get rid of that dullness that came with silence. After going through a host of bands, from Biffy Clyro to My Chemical Romance, I stumbled across Machine Head. The first album I heard of theirs was The Black Hang, which is, quite frankly, one of the greatest albums they've made. I did bother to go back and listen to older stuff, but minus Through the Ashes of Empires, I wasn't such a fan of the rapping. Unto the Locust, their follow-up to The Blackening, was my favourite album they've made. I love the first song, Sonata, it is brilliant, but the sound, it, it was perfect. It was a great mesh of really heavy metal, aggressive vocals and melody, and I loved it. Something else about their music was that it was quite... there were some biblical references. The music almost told a story, and I really enjoy that. So I, like many people, in fact two of my top dollar patrons, have been keenly awaiting Catharsis, their new album, and while we were all quite confused by the lead single Catharsis, we thought we'd give it a fair crack, wait even. And then along came the song Bastard, and I was very, very confused. Initially I thought, wait, what on earth are Green Day doing masquerading as Machine Head? The political tones the message being put across, it just, it irked me. And to me, it came across as a stepping away from their core audience, the metalheads. Now I'm sure they're going to retain many fans, for all we know this may in fact be their biggest album ever because they're stepping away from the very heavy metal that made them who they are. And they can't deny that. Rob Flynn, I hope you see this. Metal made you. Understand that. I hope you do. Because I'm a huge fan of your music. And I'm very concerned, and I always am concerned, when a band then decides to go from not being political in the past, to being political. Yes, we all have things to get off our chest, I get that. But to turn away from your core audience is either a reckless move, or, and I hypothesised this on a number of patron streams which I'm going to link in the description, I had thought that maybe you've blown your voice out, like Matt Heffy had done before Silence in the Snow, and I quite liked that album but was glad that Matt Heffy was able to do his aggression vocals again. Either that, or because of your age you were trying to be more commercial. You can claim whichever one you want, or say it's something else entirely, like your board of metal, which I believe you have done in recent interviews on the subject of catharsis. Which, if it is in fact true and the case, fair enough. I can't really argue that. If you wish to take the band in a different direction, that's fine. I'm still going to give catharsis a fair crack, but this one song really bothered me, so I thought we'd have a look at it. Now I can't play the musical video for it, well it's not really a musical video, but the official version, because it would get copyright claimed. I will link that in the description, please go watch it if you are interested. Either way, we're going to be looking at Rob Flynn's spoken word version, the slam poetry rendition, because there are some lyrics from it that really do stand out, and no, by doing this, I am not some right-wing apologist, I am merely a concerned fan who loves metal and quite enjoys Machine Head, and has on a number of occasions expressed their concern that this may not be a very good album. <clears throat> I want to also state before we get into this, there are some bands that have made a career out of being political. Muse, in a very subtle way, enter Shikari, their socialist views, very much proudly on their sleeves. And in fact, Raoul Reynolds had stated on that album, the new album, The Spark, that most of it was inspired by what happened with Brexit and Trump. That's fine. There is nothing wrong with that, but at least his music is consistent and also quite challenging to listen to, which he's okay with. He has stated that in interviews as well. I'll link those in the description. For me though, when I listen to metal, I don't want to listen to politics. If you're stepping away from metal to be more political, I can't tell if that's a new chapter in your career or if it's basically going to be Supercharger all over again. Please don't be another Supercharger. That album made me cry, because that is another hypothesis. You're trying to do what Bring Me The Horizon have done, and that is to go from being very aggressive, like they were, to then transition to melody, to be more commercial, which, again, I don't see a problem with, but as a metal fan and having been, and as the majority of your fan base are metalheads, 
it is a concern. By the way, if you are interested, Catharsis, the song, I will link it in the description. It is interesting. If you've never heard them before, it's a challenge. It's, it's not as aggressive as Unto the Locust, or Halo, or Aesthetics of Hate, or Davidian. Anyway, I've spent far too long talking about Machine Head, but not addressing the song. So take it away, Rob Flynn. Yesterday I told my sons, sometimes the bad guys win. And that it made me scared about the world that we lived in. This particular message kind of rings true for the most part, but in context with what we're going to be discussing, you'll soon discover that it isn't entirely born out of reason. So for now, I'm happy to leave it as simply a good thing to tell your son when the bad guy does actually win. Just to state it clearly, though, it can be argued that had the other person won, the bad guy would have won. Your politics are rather polarizing. But I had to reassure them that it wouldn't be for long. Sons, we have to be ourselves. We have to be strong. You are quite right. Four to eight years isn't particularly long. However, I am curious as to what you mean by strong. Do you intend to join the protests, perhaps? Then again, I just listened to the song Kaleidoscope. I foresee a job center in your future. I said, boys, you are the future. So let this be a lesson. There may come a day you have to fight off their aggression. I remember reading a lot of interviews in the past you've given about arguments you'd had with Adam when he was the guitarist, about music and recording and how it never devolved into violence. So I have to assume that you're fairly consistent in this belief of not using violence, because if you do, you become the very thing you fight, i.e. the whole fascist thing, which I'm guessing is what this song is really targeted towards hating. Because fear and hatred won today. The darkness ate the light. Okay, so now there are two things I want to quickly point out. Firstly, I'm not going to be playing the entire song, only the bits that stand out and make valid points that I can then either debunk or levy some criticism, valid criticism towards. Yeah, or I just want to poke fun, but not in a mean way. I'm not a hater. Second, and this is quite important, the interpretation of fear and hatred. It is dependent on the tactics of the campaigns and how they're perceived. In my country, Quite a lot of people would argue that the tactics used by the DNC were pretty disgusting. And let's not forget here, they threw Bernie under the bus, their only legitimate candidate, because Mervagina. Again though, the whole fear and hatred is subjective. It is how you interpret your politics in your country. Last thing I want to do is get the mobile homestead on my ass again and tell me I'm a right-wing apologist. <laughs> Jackass. But both of you look in my eyes, it'll be all right. In every step you take, I'm with you all the way. Because I would die for you, to do what's right for you, in hopes that when I'm gone, you'll carry on these words I wrote for you. No offense intended here, but I do hope your sons grow up to have some autonomy so they don't abide your words entirely and grow their own sense of sensibility and logic and reason and blah blah blah, rather than follow your quite obvious bias that feels very... And I do apologize to those that are Californian that aren't this particular type of Californian, but the type I'm very familiar with, there is a certain arrogance too. Again though, no offense tended to the normal ones. It might be a good idea to cut that toxic limb off your state. Well, I looked out to the world today, thought what a bloody mess. They stripped our morals from us, put them under house arrest. And liberty and country are the words they need to speak. A little God, a little freedom. If we don't agree, we're weak. Let's try and ignore the house arrest comment for a moment, shall we? The religious comment you make later on, though, is going to come back to bite you with later comments you make about another faith. It almost seems like one rule for one, another rule for another. Then again, with some of the slurs you use later, and an old video of yours that happens to feature on your Wikipedia page, there are some inconsistencies with things you say and do, and they are very obvious. Let's continue. And every politician stood there idle and so smug, empowering the racist and Second Amendment thugs. Okay, so there are two things I want to address here. The first thing is that you recently announced you're no longer going to be playing Davidian live. For those that don't know, Davidian is, quite frankly, their biggest song next to Halo. But because of a gun-related lyric or two, he's pulled the song from his shows. Seemed like a bit of a step too far for fans who, quite a number of whom, will turn up because they want to hear that. Second, I don't think I'm quite up to the job to do this particular segment. 
So I took the liberty of asking two Californians, I believe. They live there, I think. Is that doxing? Oh, God. I asked them if they would respond to a piece of this song for me. And I featured them in a recent video about Hawaii and incest. So please and consider subscribing to them. The link is in the description to their channel. Take it away, Two Plebs Talk News. None of that song meshed well whatsoever. They needed to take a total different route without doing that. And the guys, if they want to sing clean, need some help in that department. But when it comes down to the mainstay, metal's supposed to be hard. That was not hard. That was, I didn't get the binky I wanted when the votes came in. Fuck clean off. Uh, absolutely. These motherfucking pussies. I can't even believe... You know, I've been listening to metal for 20-something years now, and everyone in this band deserves a pacifier and a little bit of some bitch tits, because Jesus fucking Christ, if these motherfuckers can't get a... God, mother... Yep. <sighs> They're a bunch of pussies. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only one thing will make this perfect. I'm an old right furry. Now it's magical. Wall Street and the billionaires convinced us they're so smart. Screaming, vote with your wallet instead of with your heart. So this particular line raises a couple of questions about morality, I guess. For example, does voting for the Democratic Party mean you're voting with your heart or your wallet? And to be honest, that depends on your political values. The sensible move is to vote with your wallet. And yes, certain tax cuts Trump promised he has in fact honoured. As your election is not a party thing, it's a popularity contest. It's a little difficult to say you're voting with your heart when you're voting for Hillary, an actual criminal. Hashtag release the memo. But again, like I said earlier, this is dependent on your values. But for the most part, people vote with their wallet because they want to save money so they can give it back to their family. You know, those millions of people that live in your country that have kids to look after, which isn't such a bad thing, is it? Voting with your heart means nothing if the person they're voting in can't keep a simple promise. And let's face it, minus the wall and the Obamacare thing, Trump hasn't done too bad. He hasn't pushed the nuclear button yet, at least. But we won't go away. You won't forget our name. The pussy generation. The PC and the brave. The protesters that slink along these streets of misery. You know, it's quite fascinating how dividing your politics are in your country. What you call misery, someone else might call pleasant. Then again, with all those peaceful protests and those poor defenseless bins taking an absolute ass-whipping, hashtag save the bins. I'm not entirely convinced those protesters are very PC, and nor are you for that matter. Even in context with some of the words you use later to make it seem like you're being more emotional, you just come across as racist, homophobic, and... Oh, I don't even know what Slink is, but I'll look it up before I get to it. So give us all your faggots, all your niggas and your spicks! Ah, uh, spicks. Right. Don't you just love how he's racist and homophobic in one line, all the while trying to preach what he's about to preach about inclusiveness and welcoming people into his country? Yeah. Hashtag much tolerance. Oh, and I took the liberty of reading a couple of your interviews you gave about this song and the, quote, inflammatory comments. You did yourself no favours in those interviews. I will link them in the description, and thank you to Miss Peculiar Shade, one of my lovely patrons, for linking them to me. They are enlightening. Give us all your Muslims, the so-called terrorists! If this is a cheap shot at Trump wanting to ban certain people from countries that are on some kind of watch list or a list that was originally compiled by Obama, good job. But as a little aside, the numbers don't lie. No offense intended here. Again, why do I keep saying that? I should just own this, fuck it. Rob, you're a dick, a bitch, honestly. Ah, that feels so much better. We'll welcome them with open arms and put them in our mix. We're better off together now. Embrace our difference. Do you think the irony of saying that while making a song taking shots at your own country of people, by the way, the Muslim remark you make about welcoming him into your midst all the while taking shots at Christianity, amazing. What was I saying? Remember there is love! Baby, don't hurt me. 
Don't hurt me no more. Our words can stop their guns. Forget the rednecks living in the past. Disclaimer, there is nothing wrong with rednecks living in the past. They make rather amusing videos on YouTube, for example, using mattress springs to make a firework display, or burning out the tires on a truck and then burning out the rims outside a church, which to me is hilarious. We're never going back now. We've reached critical mass. And so, I'll sing. So far you've released songs Catharsis, Beyond the Pale, Kaleidoscope, and this one, Bastards. Of course, the musical version is a little different. The guitar at the beginning that runs throughout it sounds like an ice cream truck, or as my friends call it, the pedo van tune. I have pretty shit friends. Of all those songs, Beyond the Pale is the nearest to metal. Catharsis confuses me because it seems to stop start, which reminded me too much of Bring Me the Horizon, and I don't like it when I want to kind of rock out. But you can't, because the music suddenly stops. Kaleidoscope was, well, I listened to it at time of recording two hours ago. Thank you to my darling patrons that did that to me. You made me suffer and I could have gotten epilepsy from it. And finally, to this song. This one was a challenge. I hope this wasn't anywhere near as much of a pain to listen to as it was for me. I hope all of you have a lovely day. And as a side thing, just to end this video, recently with the YouTube rules changing on demonetization, my second channel, The Cthulhu Kin and Friends Show, has been demonetized, which is fine. It gives me an opportunity to rebrand. I have done a stream on there on my own for about an hour, where I talk about YouTube demonetization and the current rules. If you are interested in watching that, I will link it in the description. Thank you all for listening, and have a lovely day.